In this video, I want to introduce you to these panel radiators by Beacon Morris, which are still a pretty unique product in America. So you might not have seen radiators like this, but what I'm going to do is just walk you through the basics of what you need to know about how these operate and what these come with. So if you're looking to purchase these, you have the best understanding of what these products are. And then in my next video, I'm going to show you how to install these on a wall using wall mount brackets. And I'm going to walk you through some piping systems for installation. So if you're looking to install one of these, you have uh, some optimal understanding for making your best install. So these are actually very popular in Europe, but they are gaining more popularity in America. They just haven't been here for that long. So what's interesting about these, the most important thing you need to know is that they're sort of a hybrid between baseboard heaters and regular heater, regular radiators like a cast iron radiator because it uses convection heat and radiant heat. So baseboards just work off convection heat, radiators work off radiant heat, and these sort of combine both of them. So regular forced air heaters or convection heat baseboards require high water temperatures to have an effective BTU output. And this results in large temperature differentials in the room where hot water collects at the ceiling and cooler air at the floor level. Panel radiators work with convection heat, but the added radiant component may permit return water temperatures below 130 degrees for natural gas and 118 degrees for oil-fired applications, allowing a condensing boiler to condense and take advantage of its added efficiency. So when you order your panel radiator, it's going to come in two boxes. One is going to have the radiator itself, and the other is going to be this box right here, which just has mounting brackets, and then the necessary accessories you need for the installation, which is like, it comes with an air vent, and then it comes with a turning valve over here, and some other parts I'll go over later. And you can see in these pictures that when you install this in your home or maybe your workplace, it fits in pretty well because it's just white, and it, it looks like pretty simple. It's nothing too crazy that pops out. And you can even have your installer paint this any color you want because what it's just coated in, it is a white enamel. So you can paint over it pretty easily. So Beacon Morris has three different models of these types of radiators. There's a series 11, series 21, and series 22. And you should know the difference between them all because there's a different output range for each. So this is the series 11 right here. And what's different about this is it doesn't have a back panel. So it has a lower BTU output, but it is slightly thinner. So this is the Series 21, and it does have a, a panel on the front and back, so you could place it in either direction, whereas this one has to be placed uh, only in one direction because you don't want the back facing front. And so the difference between this and the 22 is that the 22 is just slightly thicker, so it has an even bigger BTU output. But the 22 Series also has a panel on the front and back. So these can be piped with either PEX or copper. And like I mentioned before, you need to purchase these adapters that go into the bottom of the radiator to make your connections. So these are for copper connections. And then these right here are, are for your PEX. And there's different sizes for your different types of PEX and copper. And you just need to make sure you buy the right ones. So what the radiators have their supply and return lines on the sides. But this has these supply and return lines on the bottom. So that wall mounting is ideal for these radiators. And the supply is always on the inside for these and the return line is on the outside and they're not interchangeable. Each radiator is also equipped with a manual air vent that is a half inch and removable drain plug that's also a half inch for draining the radiator. So a flathead screwdriver is needed to open the air vent, that's all. I should also add that it's recommended to run these radiators at reduced temperatures and when using a condensing boiler, the system should be designed so that the return water temperature makes the boiler condense, except on the coldest days of the year. Each radiator comes with a flow setter valve mounted on the same side as the water connections. So this valve consists of two part integral components for temperature control and flow balancing. And all you have to do is take out the plug that comes in the radiator and insert the flow valve. So there's a few additional accessories you can add for this radiator, but in this video I just want to go over this one, which is a thermostatic sensor head, and in the next video I'll show you a few more. So adding a thermostatic sensor head enables room-by-room -room zone control for optimal comfort and efficiency, and it's easily installed on the flow setter valve. These are perfect for one-room installs or small apartments where you can adjust the sensor head based on your heat preference whenever you feel like it. And if you check out this chart below, you'll see what numbers on the dial correlate to the room temperature. So those are a few of the basics for these panel radiators. And like I said, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to install these with wall brackets onto a wall. And I just want to add that these come with a 10 year warranty and that they have a max working pressure of 145 PSI and a max uh, working temperature of 200 degrees. So these are actually just great for hanging your clothes on to heat them up if they're soaking wet or anything like that, which is just like a nice little perk. And if you like the video, then press like and subscribe to the channel because I do a bunch of product reviews on things you might not have seen like these panel radiators.